So as Ben said, we're going to talk about engagement, customer engagement, and uh, your own engagement. Uh, because in the uh, 30, year, 30 years that I've been in the car business, we've always trained and coached people toward the customer, but not quite often that we've take, taken the time to hear you out how we can be become a better employer, a better company. So by doing this, create engagement with the customer. So this is what it is all about, engagement. And there is a key word that uh, I want to address. It's called tattoo. Of course, you know what is a tattoo is? Who has a tattoo? Oh, everybody? So uh, a tattoo that you put on your own skin has a strong meaning. Uh, and uh, a few years back, um, I was playing with my oldest daughter in a pool in uh, North Carolina in a camping. And at one point she said, Daddy, Daddy, stop. And I said, what? Look at the, the, the guy over there. I said, what? What is wrong with the guy? He said, look at the tattoo. Said, yeah, yeah. The guy had the tattoo of the Ford Motor Company right here. And it was a big one. So I said to my daughter, I said, Coralie, this is the logo of the Ford uh, car company. What? She was flabbergasted by that, that somebody would have a, a car company uh, on uh, his own skin. And when you think of that, it has a meaning for this person, like your tattoo has a meaning for you. And it, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's not rational. It's way much more emotional. And the, the, in today's world, if you want to make a difference, this is, I think, a direction I want to show you that we, we need to have. And it starts with you. So I'll show you a video and we'll talk. validated you you are awesome excuse me you have an amazing face you've got powerful features man anyone ever tell you that um no and listen you look a little down and it may seem like sometimes people don't understand you but someday man someday people are gonna see you for what you really are you you really think so? Absolutely. You are great. Need a validation, please? You. You are great, ma'am. You have amazing cheekbones. Really? Oh, sir! Yes. We have a situation. Where? Oh, my God. <laughs> What the hell's going on? You've been through it. You know. You've had so much life experience that other people don't appreciate, but you know. Bless you, dear. They're not patronizing the shops. They're just coming to see him. Oh, sir. Get in great shape. You work out? Not for long. I do, actually. Uh, but there. Yeah. Thanks. Young man, we are running a business here, not a social club. That is a fantastic suit. It really flatters you. You think so? You guys work so hard. You are the backbone that keeps this place running. But I always felt like no one really appreciated us. Yeah, I mean, our jobs are so stressful. And it seems like most of the times people just don't see it. No. What you do is so important. You know, I bet the boss would love to meet you. You are great. Yeah! You provide hundreds of jobs, sustaining hundreds of families. That's huge. That's so good to hear. Most times I feel like people don't recognize that. I'm just the big bad man on the hill. Not at all. You give. Oh, my Lord. You know... I know some people who would probably like to meet you.
if you would have to, I don't know, it's a cartoon, it's a big caricature, if you would have to give a one to five, five being the best, for the experience that he's providing to, the, the, to, to, to his guest, what would you give him? Five. Five? 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 Okay. You know what is interesting in your answer? Is that what you decided to look at is the emotion. It was dirty. It was narrow. It was very dark. And they, they had the, a waiting line for customer. You decided to look at the emotion. And when we talk about the engagement, this is what it's all about. If I have the choice to recommend my, uh, to, to recommend a business or a, a someone to my brother, or someone that I do care a lot, am I, do, would, would you recommend that person to someone that you know that follows all the process and the rules or someone that will take good care of, of your friend, of your brother? I don't know about you, but for me, it would be the second choice. And the second choice is all about emotional connection. And this is based on out of research. They found that in research, in the retail environment, we're going to put our money in our pocket and come keep coming back to a store. 70% of the time, it's going to be emotional reason. And 30% of the time, it's going to be rational reason. But even that, for the rational reason, the only way to get there is through here with the trust and the respect and so on that we'll see. So grab the, the, the card and the paper and I'm going to ask you to write down the name of a company of a business that you've been doing business with for quite a few years. It could be anything, hairdresser, hairstylist, cosmetics, electronic, grocery store, gas station, so on. So write down the name of a business that you use as a customer. You, it cannot be Amazon. You need to move to that business, a restaurant. Okay, now you're going to write down three or four reasons why you've been loyal to that company. And I'm pretty sure you're going to say good, good customer service, okay? But if I'm buying one pound of good customer service, what's in the box? They know my name, they, 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 they know my need, they give me good advice, they listen to my need, whatever. Okay? Three to four good reasons why you are loyal to that business. You want to start, Ben? Sure, I can start. Go. Um, why? Uh, consistency in the product, in, in delivery, you know, service or product, whatever. Consistency. Okay. Um, ease of doing business with them. It's a test, and I have what I want for the year, take care of. Okay. And uh, final one, let's say um, um, trust. I, they say the same people all the time, so I know who's in my backyard. Who's, and That's it? Price point there is pretty good. For an hour, it's 30 bucks. Okay. Yeah. So it's fair price. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, the specialist of customer loyalty they define loyalty through those four channels. We can be loyal for one of most of those reasons. We can be loyal to price, Walmart, Costco of those words. Product, Apple is a good example. Process, the way we do business. And people, the attitude, the enthusiasm, the smiliness, the kindness of the people. So let's take one by one all of your answers. Consistency of delivery. Is it have to do with price, product, people, or process, or other? Process. Process. And who's doing the process? People. People. Uh, ease of doing business with? People. Process. Process and people? Okay. Trust with the people. Shelves are stuck. Process. Process and... Of course, service friendliness. Uh, know the staff personally. <laughs> they are close by. Uh, other. other. Great communication. People. Fair price. price. Uh, fast delivery. People. And process. process. Meet friends in the community they've built. People. people trying to be inclusive, LGBTQ. Uh, people. And talking, you need to know how to talk to people. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, you can say that too. <laughs> so, what is your conclusion? It's all about people. A lot. Even though there are some company try to target the price or the product, at the end of the day, it's all about the people. That's the people that makes a difference. That's the people that create this emotional connection that we need to get in the business. So, having this said, there have been a business model that have been going on for quite a few years that says that the more customers are going to be satisfied, the more loyal they're going to be. In 2023, is it still valid? Yes. You say yes? Rob? Yes? 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 Yeah. Then? Well, I got to say no. <laughs> because you know, you, you know the answer. <laughs> you know, Harvard University looked into this in two different fields, the financial world and the automotive world. And what they find out, because of the competition there is today, if you get 80% of the satisfaction, what you're going to get is 30% of loyalty. So the more satisfied your customer will be, the more loyal they're going to be. But look at the gap here. It's not a straight line. And the, the, if I, we look at your own CSI score, I combine sales and service, you're at 73.5 as we speak. It means that about 40% of the time your customer are loyal, 60% of the time they're going to, they might go somewhere else for any kind of reason. But it has a lot to do with what? Process and people. Now, this is the game what, where we, we, not, we want to play. Because the secret to provide good customer service is pretty simple. Have a good process, smile, and be nice with people. And that's good customer service. But in 2023, where is the competition? What is your competition in 2023? Inventory. Inventory, yeah, that's a big fact in the, yeah. Price point is another one. What else is your competition? Because you, if you think about that, do you have control over price? No. Not that much, huh? You can lower the price. If you do that, you affect the gross margin. And you affect the gross margin, you affect everybody's pocket. So we don't control that much of our price. Do we have control over the product? No. No. <laughs> I mean, the, the product is, what is the product is? The part, the car. and So there is two left, people and process. Do we have control about the way we do business? That's the good news. And do we have the control or influence about our own attitude, the enthusiasm we see in others? And I think the answer is yes. So to bring this up here, and I'll give you an idea of what it, what it could look like. I have a friend of mine. His name is Robert McKee. And Robert is doing the same work as I do uh, out west in Vancouver. So a few years back, he got a contract with, uh, from a, a U.S. company. And that company said, Robert, can you stay at the Marriott Hotel? He said, no problem. First met Marriott Hotel he went was in Chicago, 11 o'clock at night. He was tired, but he, he was thirsty. So took the phone, uh, room service. Hi, I'd like to have a, 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 an iced tea, please. Probably the gentleman or the lady at the other end of the, the phone looked at the screen and said, oh, yes, Mr. Mickey. His last name is Mr. Mickey. Mr. Mickey, you, do, do you need something else? Yes, he, he said, I would like to have a quarter of lemon. No problem, Mr. Mickey. We're going to be there in 10 minutes. Hang up the phone 10 minutes later, knock on doors, open the door, take the iced tea, sign the bill, shut the door, drink the iced tea, wash, uh, brush his teeth go to bed, end of story. A few weeks after that, he's been to the uh, Marriott Hotel in San Francisco. He pay, he was, uh, while he was paying his, uh, the, the cab, he felt that somebody was taking his luggage. So he turned around, he was a concierge. Hello, sir. Welcome to the Marriott Hotel in San Francisco. First time here? Yeah, it's my first time. So uh, let's go to the reception. Put the luggage there. He said, sir, have a great day. The lady at the desk uh, greeted my friend like this. Good morning, sir. 
welcome as a new customer to the Marriott Hotel in San Francisco. So my friend looked at her and she said, how do you, how come you know that I'm a new customer? The, uh, the, the, the gentleman uh, asked you, yeah, but I didn't see, talk to him. Oh, we have a code. What is the code? He grabbed his ears. And when he grabbed his ears, we know it's a, a new customer and we customize the greeting. Is it wow? I don't know. Is it cool? I think yes. So story doesn't end there. He grabbed his luggage, bring it to the room, and he got thirsty. Took the phone. Hi, I'd like to have a nice tea, please. Oh, Mr. Mickey. Mr. Mickey, would you still want to have a quarter of lemon with that? How do they know? How do they know? I'm sorry? Because he ordered it at the other hotel, so the computers. Exactly. And that is, this is where you have a role to play. It's in all of the little details. You can make the difference about coming up with that. But we need that. To achieve that, we need that. We need to have people engage within the company. We need to have people that build relationship, respect, transparency, and trust. This works with customer and this works also between ourselves. So I'll show you some example of what it is and what it is not in a restaurant. Which one does it touch? Respect. Of course, respect. And it's not, and it's not don't get me wrong. It's not smarter having this done by the customer with mustard and ketchup. I, I, I know, but. So me and my wife, we have uh, two cottage in the Laurentian of Montreal. And uh, when we bought, we're buying the, next, the, the last one. I got into some struggling with the, the, the bank. So the lady at the bank wrote me, hello, Mario, I called the company. They told me that it was you who had to call them. So here's a number. Here's the reference number. Call them. Please have a nice day. I did call them. And then I wrote her back. Hello. Are you sure of the number? I never got an answer. I can't even leave a message. She wrote me back. Yes, this is the number you should call. I'm sorry, it didn't work. If you want to call back and tell them, no one answered. <laughs> True story. So which one of the four does it affect? Trust. Trust, for sure. Relationship as well. $18 million that it costs to uh, renovate that store in Quebec. It's a Toyota store, a big one. $145 to have my car fixed or maintained. I go at the, in the bathroom and I come to wash my hand. And this is what I see close to the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Does it still worth $145? Uh, $45? Uh, $45? Of course not. It trusts. So this salesperson, the customer was sitting down here. And if, uh, if you, you have a customer in front of you, what he was saying to me, it, he said that customer always wanted to see what was on the screen. He said, I have enough of this. So he paid from his own pocket a TV screen facing the customer. Why did he do that? Transparency. Transparency. If you have the chance to go in Montreal on Saint Laurent Boulevard, there is a very good restaurant called Fritalor. And Fritalor, if you want to go to the bathroom, which door would you use? Exactly. <laughs> Why do they do this? I don't know, but where do you see this? Banks. Banks. And we'll leave, we're giving them our money, huh? but they are treating them like steel people. Don't steal our pen. Why? Gee, leave it alone and print your logo and give it away. How about this? $145. I'm sorry? Is that here? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> oh, you can go to the shop. No problem. Is it still worth $145 an hour? It's not here, by the way. Your garage is awesome, man. Eh? On the service advisor desk. So I told the, the, the lady, it's not funny. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. My customer find it funny. Not sure. So who make this happen? All of the picture. People. It's the difference between doing it and not doing it. 
It, it, we don't talk about rocket science here. And what we've discovered is employee engagement equal customer engagement. We want to have good CSI. We need your CSI to be reinforced. Because in most of the company, what we found is that 25% of the people within an organization are very, very engaged. I'll show you some uh, example. 55s are like, it's okay to work here. They're engaged but 20% are disengaged. The name of the game is to take a bunch of those people and move it here. So let's look at what very engaged people look like. Joey, can you read the first sentence? Instead of pointing, take the client to the desired location. When is the last time that you 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 experienced that in a store? When was the last time? Do you remember? North Coast, good for that. North Nordstrom? Yep. Business, yeah, they're out of business. <laughs> 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 they weren't out of business here. Nordstrom still is in the States, but they're, yep. they that. they're good with that. Okay. Rob, the next one? Introduce the person to the service department upon delivery of the new and used vehicle. It's some, something I've been that we've, we started doing it over again. Right. Why do we do it? Go ahead. Right. Rather than pointing over there and them not listening, you actually introduce with the service advisor, you get them more engaged with people, which is part of the process, and then better return, better customer satisfaction. Yep, to create the connection, the relationship. The three meter rule. What is the three meter rule, Ben? Not the two meter rule. <laughs> <laughs> it could be one meter rule as well. It could be. I uh, acknowledging and greeting people within three meter radius of you when you colleague or customer colleague both. Or customer, yeah. Yeah, cool. Luca, when you are busy on the phone or there's someone to show up, someone who is waiting, yeah, that, you, uh, you have seen that. How do we do that? Um, be on your phone and engage with the customer, Pretty or easy. just point just a minute. Yeah, huh? or yeah, if you're busy. Yeah. Joey. Back of the guilt, one in parking. What do we mean by that? Like reverse the car so it's facing forward? Yep. Yeah. Why do we do that? Better presentation, do, just like the do, fruit? Do you want the answer that you want, or do you want the real answer? No, they're both. The real? Answer. Both? What's the real yeah. When I was an apprentice, you would get absolutely chastised for not backing the car in because it drastically increases the chances of a customer having an accident. Yeah. Okay. And that's and <laughs> I'm sure you do it now, Rob. <laughs> you do it now? I said that was what, 20 years ago. Yeah, I still do it. Yeah. Okay. But when I go places on my own, I back in. Yeah. That, that's a silly one. Pick up the guard, the that's paper. Oh, no? No, that's not silly. What does it show? It shows that you care. Yep. $145 an hour. If I see you doing that, I'll... Sh I'll, I'll uh, ben? I'm sitting, stand up when a customer arrives to welcome, welcome them. It's kind of funny, huh? If we would not do this when we greet some people at our house, what would they say? You just stay on the couch and, oh yeah, come on in, come on in. It's not professional. Eh? It's not professional. No. Uh, Luca? Ask people to take off their coats when they come to the store for a vehicle. Especially winter time. Joey? Bring the customer's vehicle near the door prior to delivery. Makes sense. Rob? Explain to the customer how to use the accessory of the part that he has just got. Or confirm that he knows how to use it. Then? Use the customer's name. As much as you can. And Luca? Say to your coworkers and customers every day, please, thank you, hello, good evening, and how can I help you? If we would do this just 10% more by year end, how much of an effect would it have, you think, within ourselves? 60%. Poof, at least. Those companies understood that. And I'm pretty sure you recognize some logo. Which one do you recognize? Disney. Of course. Yeah, you know them? Yeah. Have you seen that junk? Yeah. I, I, I used to, when I was a roofer, that's who I would go with. Okay. The, the company that I was working with, anyway. It's got junk. They're great for dropping it and picking up the 
uh, there's yeah. the junk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. great. It's a Vancouver-based company. It's a Canadian company. And uh, Nespresso, for sure. How much is a cup of Nespresso, Nespresso coffee? She, yeah, way too much. <laughs> but the funny thing is, I don't know about the store here in Ottawa, but in Montreal, in Laval, Carrefour, people are waiting in line all the time to go there. And it's expensive. Uh, this one, you know, in 2006, they, start, they started selling shoes, uh, women's shoes online. And they got bought by Amazon a few years ago for the amount of? 1.3 billion. So if you want to see good customer experience, type down Zappos in YouTube and you'll be amazed. But the one I want to talk to you about is Chick-fil-A. Ever heard about it? It's a fast food chain down in the uh, in, in uh, uh, United States. They have two locations now in Canada, one in Toronto, one in Calgary. And uh, they're very, very well known for the taste of their chicken sandwich. Uh, they are an interesting company because they do things different. Their mascot is a uh, cow. And, you know, you understand the joke, I'm pretty sure. Uh, exactly. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. On the business side, okay, they make more money per restaurant than McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, all those fast food. For the last 10 or 12 years in a row, they've been number one in CSI, in customer satisfaction, in the uh, customer report uh, survey that they're doing every year. They're closed on Sunday. It's a family store. What do you think they're closed on Sunday? Church. Basically church. And so, yeah, that's right. Because the, 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 the president that started the company got into trouble about some gay comment that he did against gay community. He apologized, but it shows that nobody's perfect at the end of the day. How much does it cost, you think, to have a Chick-fil-A franchise? Just to give you an idea, Tim Horton costs about a, a three quarter of a million dollar. So how much for them? Half a million? Say that again? So there's one in Scarborough Town Center. It can't be that much. <laughs> Yeah, there's a few. Yeah. I went there two weeks ago. Any ideas? Any idea? 250. 250? Yeah. 10,000. Only $10,000 to get a franchisee. And the reason being? They take about 0.03% of their, of their applicants. They get over 100,000 applicants for stores every year. So it gives them a better pool to choose from, from people. So they're they're essentially buying attitude when they're buying their their mm -hmm. uh, new franchisees. Yep. So they don't make money. They don't put money in the way of the, of the decision they get to make. Yeah, they get a hundred and hundred of application every year. They have the choice to pick the people that they want to work with. So having this said, you will understand that it's a fast food chain. So mostly they employ teenager minimum wage. When they employ a new uh, new member in the team, they're going to provide them two weeks of training. And during those training, they're going to show them a video that I'd like to share with you to show them what is the culture of the Chick-fil-A.
It's touching. What do you think they showed the video? Relate. To relate? What do you think, Rob? That was uh, just uh, to show it that, like that we're all people. Mm -hmm. right? We're not just people that show up to a business. It's not the same thing. Passion. Yep. I'm pretty sure we ran into some customer that are not that easy, not nice. Do they have their own story? Do we have ours? Of course. So if we would just take a little bit of time, not first, not to judge and to get to know each other a little bit more, how of a difference would it make? So the next step we want to do with you is to look at your own story with uh, Kanata Toyota. And this is how we're going to do it. Now we got Crystal Palace coming here on Saturday. Anything we need to know, Coach? A lot of speed on the outside. Okay. Anything else? A lot of speed. <laughs> okay, you heard the man. Uh, Y'all whipped him up pretty good earlier this year, so me and Coach ain't going to mess with the game plan. But, 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 we would like to start fiddling with the way we do things here in the locker room. And if the Internet has taught us anything, it's that sometimes it's easier to speak our minds anonymously. Right? So I asked Nate here to make us a good old-fashioned suggestion box. Hey, look at that. Yeah, I did it with my niece. She loves crafts. Uh-huh, yeah. I love glimpses into your personal life. It's lovely. <laughs> so, if anything's got y'all hot and bothered, just go ahead and drop us a note. You could have issue with uh, the color of the towels or, heck, the food in the vending machine. Sound good? Okay, great. <laughs> See y'all tomorrow. Hey. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Wanker. Let's see what else we got. Piss off, wanker. I hope you choke on a Big Mac. Good thing these are anonymous. No, Roy signed that one. Roy. Oh, here's a good one. Shower pressure is rubbish. Make a note of that. Uh, wanker. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna say that word out loud. Boy, that is bad. Somebody ought to check this thing's prostate. Yeet. Careful, son. The gap has fixed the water pressure. We didn't see it coming, huh? So we wanna, we don't want to use the shoebox. We want to use today's technology. So in the next two weeks, we're gonna ask you to spend about twenty to thirty minutes. Uh, we're gonna make some time free for you during your uh, work time to answer a 30 or uh, about a 30 questions survey how you feel about your own engagement within the company the survey is confidential anonymous you do not have to identify yourself unless you want it to there is only one person who will know all of the answer and it's called mr internet so at the end of the survey when we'll be done in the next two weeks I'll gather up all of the uh, input that I got. We'll meet again. I'll show you. You'll be the first one to look at the results. I'll show you the strength, the opportunity. We'll discuss, of course, the opportunity, how we, we can fix that. The next day, I'll sit down with the managers and we'll we want to come up with a, an action plan to resolve those opportunities. And you want to say a few words about that? So... Do you have any questions or concern about what we've seen or about this survey?